I have a carton of uh, material here that I'm sure most of you recognize. I'm going to open it. I'm going to pour it into a cup. If I can have the volunteers come up, please. You saw what happened when I poured the juice into the uh, glass. Uh, I'd like to ask you now to think about any questions you'd like to ask about what you've observed before I poured the juice in the, in the uh, cup and now since the juice has been in the cup. Whatever questions you have, I'd like you to ask them. Let's start with the volunteers. Why did you pick orange juice? Okay. That's one is, question. Is orange juice the only thing that works? That's two questions. Why is the clock running? Three questions. Let's have a few more. Why aren't there numbers on your clock? Are you wearing a watch? No. Good. What time <laughs> is it? Look, uh, if you come around the front for a moment and look at the clock, and tell me what time it is right now. 8.39. How do you know? I know the symbols. Of, I know the... No, you know what? Position of the clock hand. Oh. Well, suppose, suppose I turn the clock 90 degrees. Like that. What time is it now? 5 to 12. No, no, it's still 8.39. All I did was pick up a piece of plastic and turn it around. It's still 8.39. Well, let's look at it again. There are a number of purposes that I have in mind in using this clock in a classroom. Now, uh, let me tell you how I use it in the classroom and what, my, what some of my goals are. I use it the very first time I meet my students, and I've done this for probably 30 years. Every time I meet a group of students, whether it's in a lecture situation at a conference or my class, whether they were high school students or education majors, I started my course first day with this clock. Just like we did today, I didn't say a word to them, I just picked up the carton of orange juice, showed it to them. Uh, I forgot to ask you to taste it, but that's all right. You, uh, there's some left in the, in the cart, and we can get one of you to taste it later. Uh, and and uh, poured it into the cup. And that, that's where the action started. My students have asked as many as 30 questions in a 20 or 25 minute session on what they saw. How, uh, is it keeping good time? Uh, how far apart are the electrodes? What are the electrodes? Well, if you look in the cup, if you look closely in the cup, or actually I can show you samples of them. The, these are the electrodes. The one on my left, immediate left, is copper. The one beside it is a piece of magnesium ribbon about 30 centimeters long wrapped around a stir stick, a coffee stir stick. And you, and you can see the electrodes. You, they're in the, in the beaker. Uh, one of them is connected to a pair of yellow wires and one connected to a pair of green wires. Oh, why two clocks? How many clocks could we run on one glass of orange juice? How are the clocks connected? How far apart are the electrodes? Does it matter what brand of juice? Now, there's one question that I will answer for my students. You notice I haven't answered any of your questions yet, uh, other than the time. And of course, you recognize the time now. Hydrogen is element number one, helium number two, lithium number three, and so on. So I'm, we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, I haven't answered any of the questions. Uh, at one point, I have to stop. We've listed all the questions on, on either on a blackboard or on, or on an easel in class. And I stop and I say to the students, ask me again the question that you asked before. 
So if one of my volunteers would ask the question they asked before, please. How are the clocks running? Uh, give me an easier question. <laughs> <laughs> Is orange juice the only thing that works? How would you find out? You would have different setups of perhaps other juices. Okay, mm -hmm. another question. So are those the only metals that you can use as the electrodes? How would you find out? Try other metals. Okay. So you've now heard my answers to every question the students have asked, except the one, mm -hmm. uh, because that doesn't have the same kind of uh, quick answer that I can give. But I can answer the other 25 questions with, how would you find out? After viewing the questions, uh, reviewing the questions on the board, I asked the students to divide themselves into groups of three or four and come up to the front of the room and, and pick up samples, oh, no, sorry, uh, I asked my students to divide themselves in groups of four and design an experiment to answer one of the questions on the board, uh, preferably the one they picked. But if, if, they didn't, if they didn't pick out a question, they'll take one from the list. I give them about 10 minutes to write their experimental design in point form. And at that time, I walk around the classroom and introduce myself to the students. I didn't do that at the beginning of the class, remember? We started right away. I walk around the classroom, introduce myself to the students, get their names, take attendance, send it down to the office. The office doesn't know that I didn't take attendance at the beginning of the class. I took it five minutes into the class. The office gets what they want, and I get what I want. Okay, they've designed their experiment. Then I have them come up to the front of the room and pick up the equipment they need. I can pretty well guess at most of the equipment they need. I have them pick up the equipment, go back to their, their, their benches, and do the experiment. Another 10 minutes. After they've done the experiment, I ask them to report to the class, report their results to the class. So look at what we've done. In the first 40 minutes of class, they observed a demonstration. They asked questions. They designed an experiment. They did an experiment. They reported to the class, or if you like, they did some cooperative learning in the first 40 minutes. The kids leave class thinking to themselves, they've told me this, they leave class thinking to themselves, wow, this is day one, and he gave us homework too, because we have to write up the experiment. This is day one. Is every day going to be as busy as this? Uh, some kids are happy that they're doing science. Science is a verb. We do science. You don't talk about it. Uh, and most of the, the demonstrations that I use in my classroom are such that it leads into things that the students can do and then write about. So they end day one. Uh, they've done an experiment, as I said, and, they, uh, 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 and they've prepared themselves to come ready to work every day.